Hello everyone and welcome to this review for Rogue for Rise of the Shadows uh, by me, the Vicious Syndicate uh, Rogue Expert, <laughs> uh, if that matters at all. Uh, and uh, we're going to be talking about Rogue, we're going to be rating the cards on a 1 to 5 scale. You can check the description below if you're watching on um, YouTube to get an understanding of the 1 to 5 scale. Basically 1 is trash, 5 are meta defining cards and the other ratings are somewhere in between. And then we also have the option of saying that something is a tech card with specialists now being relevant. Um, we're going to be talking about some cards in the context of that where they might be cards you only want to put in your sideboard uh, to gain value against control or to have a better chance against aggro, for instance, as to obvious uh, reasons to have different sideboards. Uh, or just to sometimes have cards that disrupt very specific game plans. Those are also often sideboard options. Okay, so let's start with Rogue. Um, we have Heist Baron Togwaggle here. Uh, Heist Baron Togwaggle is a 6-mana 5-5 five, five legendary minion with battle cry. If you control a lackey, choose a fantastic treasure. So... Uh, all of the lackeys are one mana one ones. We discussed them in the neutral review. They're all pretty good. Um, so having lackeys in your deck, uh, well, you can't have lackeys in your deck directly, sorry, but having cards that generate lackeys in your deck seems fairly good regardless of Heist Baron Togwaggle. Um, the fantastic treasures you get are the same treasures we saw in Kobolds and Catacombs. So uh, wish the crown, no, not wish, sorry, I always think of wish. Um, the crown thing, uh, oh man, the one that, so, so the one is to summon two random legendaries, the other one is the go golden kobold thing, um, where, which is basically the same as the golden monkey was, uh, and then we've got the, um, We've got the 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 one card that um, draws three cards and reduces their cost to zero, which is probably one of the most exciting ones. Uh, and then we've got the one that uh, draws a card and fills your hand with copies of it. So all of those are pretty good. Uh, notably, three of them are spells, so they work very well with prep. There's a decent chance that uh, you can play Heist Baron Togwaggle, for instance, and actually just uh, prep out the cards that turn. Uh, a lot of the spells are the three mana spells, so... That's pretty important. Um, so I think that the, the big question we have to ask is whether we, how often we're actually going to have a lackey on the board. Now you can just play the lackey in the same turn. Uh, you get a one mana one one then that can have some effect and you can play Heist Baron Togwaggle uh, right after that and get the treasure immediately. You can prep out the treasure. This is kind of the way you can get the maximum tempo out of this. Heist Baron Togwaggle in that sense is like another way to refill. It could be good in some combo situations where you get the um, card that draws you cards from your deck and... Um, uh, draws three cards and reduces their cost to zero. Like hitting something like Malagos is silly off that. Uh, with the Togwego scheme that we'll see coming up, you could hit like three Malagoses, let's say in the extreme late game where you get to that scenario where you've been able to play Malagos, play Togwego scheme on it, and then play like Heist Baron Togwaggle um, uh, with the Lackey on the, the next following turn. So let's say turn not even turn 10 is going to be realistic, but let's say you, you play that the following turn, you can prep out the Wondrous Wand, which is the one that draws three cards and reduces their cost to zero, draw your three Malagosses, play those, and then you've got three mana with which to uh, play uh, spells. So, you know, we could talk like one prep eviscerate um, and two shadow strikes. That's already quite a lot of damage. You're getting 15 from each Malagos. So 19 from the Eviscerate and 18 from each of the Shadow Strikes. So that's more than enough for lethal, but it takes quite a bit of setup to get there. And right now, uh, most of the Mali Rogue decks, the thing they have going for them is that they're a lot faster to get to their Mali combo than some of the slower decks like Mali Druid. And the big issue is for Rogue uh, is that staying alive for that long in the game to make uh, these slow combos work has always been a problem. And so that's where I kind of doubt that that's going to be the best use for Togwaggle. I think that Togwaggle seems like a fairly decent card in a lot of scenarios, though. If you think about Togwaggle as something like Gadgets and Auctioneer, 
where you have one card that you have to synergize with it, which is the Lackey. And if you have the Lackey, you get like something like uh, Wondrous Wand. You, you're drawing three cards and reducing their cost to zero, which is a very powerful effect in um, a rogue deck. You know, you kind of might give up a bit of tempo to play High Baron Togwaggle in a turn, but then you can gain that back with the uh, Wondrous Wand um, in the following turn. Or if you have prep, maybe you can gain it back that turn immediately. Uh, you can also prep out the um, the crown, which is the Discover a Legendary Minion and summon two copies of it. And that will give you some immediate tempo on the board. So I think that there's... T the thing I like about Togwaggle is that he's very flexible. And he's a card that you seem to be able to run in multiple different decks. I'm a big fan of the design and I'm really looking forward to um, testing out a bunch of different Togwaggle things on the on launch day on stream so i think that's going to be pretty exciting so i'm going to give togwaggle a four uh i think that the treasures are just really powerful uh and in rogue in particular where we can prep out the spell treasures uh that seems very very useful as well so i'm looking forward to um playing high sparrow and togwaggle and uh prepping out that toblin's goblet or Tolan's goblet the one that draws a card and fills your hand with copies of it and getting a handful of Myra's unstable element that's going to be exciting um but otherwise I think yeah Togwaggle's a four and we need to move on or we can be here all day just talking about Togwaggle uh next up we have Tak Noswisker um Tak Noswisker is a seven mana six six legendary minion whenever you shuffle a card into your deck add a copy of it or add uh, a copy to your hand so the one big combo people talked about with this was tack nas whisker and prep uh academic espionage it has been confirmed that you do actually get the reduced copies of the cards which i didn't think you would in your hand in which case uh you can have some fairly solid tempo in that turn Let, let's say it's turn 10 um you can tack nas whisker prep uh, the Academic Espionage, and you can still play two of the cards. The problem is that on turn 10, tempo is not that relevant, so it probably doesn't matter much uh, that you can actually make up for the tempo loss. It really just needs to matter earlier on. And playing a 7-mana 6-6, six, six, even if I filled my hand with uh, cards, might not be that good. Um, the fact that this has to stick around to get most of the value from most of the shuffle cards doesn't really seem like something that interests me. So I think Tak Nas Whisker is going to be a two at best. I think uh, we're probably not going to see him be seeing much play. The one other scenario we can consider is Tak Nas Whisker with the, uh, the scheme. But I don't quite see the reason to do that. I think Tak could be a card that is seen play, sees play in some sideboards. But I think it's more of a meme uh, rogue legendary to be quite honest. Uh, next up, we have Unidentified Contract. So Unidentified Contract is a six-mana uh, epic spell with that reads, destroy a minion, gain a bonus effect in your hand. So much like all the Unidentified cards we saw before, you'll find out exactly what the bonus effect is when you draw this card. Um, the diff four different bonus effects are deal damage to its adjacent minions. Uh, so that's adjacent to the minions that you de that you destroy. Um, summon a 1-1 one, one assassin with poisonous and stealth, so a patient assassin. Uh, add two coins to your hand. Uh, add a copy of a destroyed minion to your hand. That's the So those are the last two. So if we look at these, um, deal damage to its adjacent minions. That's a fairly good effect. It's like a, a weird version of um, Meteor where you guaranteed kill the middle minion and you deal some damage to the minions on the side. And if the middle minion is the one, if the big minion is the one in the middle, uh, then you should probably kill the other two on the side. And in that case, an identified contract would be pretty powerful if it was always that um, contract. Uh, the summoning a patient assassin is okay if their board is tall rather than wide. Like being able to kill their singular big minion and then set up to kill the next one that they play is a powerful effect. It's now, a lot of classes can kill the Patient Assassin these days. Even though it has stealth, the one health is not going to survive many AoE options or any AoE options. So any decks that have some random damage or AoE can actually kill the Patient Assassin, um, which takes away a lot from that. 
Next, we have the two coins to your hand. Uh, that's pretty bad. I mean, that means we're netting four, uh, paying, we're netting four for this contract in terms of what we had to pay. And we may as well play walk the plank for that case. Adding the coins to your hand would be nice if we knew that it always did that. Then we could plan to uh, build a deck around the idea where we can have a turn where we can have extra mana, like something like a Maligos, and you can play some coins to play out your um, Sinister Strikes immediately, something like that. But that's not the case here. The case is that you might get the coins, so when you put this in your deck, you don't know, and that makes the coin effect absolutely trash and probably the worst one of these. Uh, and then the next one is add a copy of the destroyed minion to your hand. Now this is close uh, to the above one for being the worst. Uh, I, I getting the minion in your hand. That's that just that's just not. Once again, we might put this in our deck if we knew it did that reliably as a value option, but we don't know it does that. So that seems pretty bad to me. I mean, you could say unidentified contract gives you some value either way, but it's not a strong enough tech card that I would spend one of my five tech slots in specialist to bring in an unidentified contract. I don't want to main deck this because I don't know what it does. And all of the four effects are too disparate that they don't really go in the same decks. Um, and I don't want to put this in my sideboard because once again, I don't know what it does. And I need my cards that are in my sideboard to be much more specific in the, the kind of decks or uh, that they're answering. So I think unidentified contract just gets a one for me. I think it's pretty trash. Um, obviously we have to consider that Rogue has prep, uh, so that is still one way you can cheat this out earlier, but I don't, I don't really, I don't, I don't like that. Even if we, the, the best case for prep a lot of the time is going to be prepping this and, um, getting the two coins in that scenario. So once again, if we knew it gave the two coins, then we could consider prep this gives you two coins and then you can play, uh, so if you prep this on three and got the two coins, you could play a five drop or a six drop on turn four with the two coins. But that's not the scenario here. Like we just don't know what an identified contract is gonna give you and that's just not good enough for Rogue. Next, we have one of the cards that I'm probably most excited about in Rogue and that's Waggle Pick. Uh, Waggle Pick is a four mana four two weapon for Rogue. Uh, it's an epic and it reads Death Rattle, return a random friendly minion to your hand. It costs two less. So the shadow step effect if, uh, on the waggle pick. Now, obviously this card is extremely punishing if your opponent uses weapon removal on it. Gladness Ooze is rotating, so that helps. A lot of decks would have uh, often run that as weapon removal that won't be running it now. Uh, Acidic Swamp Ooze is a lot less common in decks. We might see a bit of Harrison Jones returning as a tech card. But overall, I think maybe Waggle Pick is going to be free of the removal problems because um, w the a lot of the other removal, uh, a lot of the other weapons that you want to remove are rotating out. So Skull of the Minari, Twig of the World Tree uh, are rotating out. And I think that makes Waggle Pick a lot better as well. Um, we also have to remember that Shadow Blade is rotating out. Uh, so that means if we want to build a Pirate Rogue deck, we might need to play Waggle Pick. The problem in, with Waggle Pick and the Pirate Rogue decks is they're very often tempo-based decks. And Waggle Pick can very much anti-tempo you if your opponent uh, kills it. Or even a lot of the times if you just use it twice, it can anti-tempo you on the second turn. Uh, so you want to find good ways to actually use the, the Waggle Pick effect. I think that there's obviously some combo synergies. Um, you know, playing this and then playing a Maligos the next turn and attacking to, to trigger it. You get your Maligos back to your hand, but you may as well have just played Maligos Shadow Step. Like, I, I think for any combo specific scenarios like that, you're better off playing Shadow Step. But for a lot of other tempo based rogue decks, I think Waggle Pick is going to be pretty good. Um, I'm going to have to just give it a three though. Uh, I think it could be a deck card that sees play in, in multiple rogue decks, but most of the time I think we're only going to see it in in some of the, the rogue archetypes. So I'm going to have to give it a three, even though I'm pretty excited about Waggle Pick. Uh, probably the card I'm most excited about in rogue. Uh, next up we have Vendetta. Uh, Vendetta is a card that's gotten a lot of hype. A four mana uh, spell, a rare spell. Deal four damage to a minion, costs zero if you're holding a card from another class. So this is an archetype that Ro uh, that um, Blizzard seemed to be pushing for Rogue again in this expansion. Uh, the kind of thief rogue archetype. Uh, now they've changed it 
they've changed most of the cards to say another class. So if cards generate cards, um, they generate them from another class. Uh, it doesn't matter too much for these cards that are triggered by the generated cards. But um, that is something to, to keep in mind going forward that the archetype might get better as we see that. Uh, because otherwise it was pretty bad in a rogue mirror. Uh, and rogue is looking like it should be a pretty decent class overall. So rogue mirrors are um, a reasonable thing to consider when we consider these cards that require you to have a card from a, a different class uh, in your hand or uh, on the board, whatever the uh, requirement is. So let's see, zero mana to deal four damage is insane, obviously. Four mana to deal four damage kind of sucks. Uh, we could just trig. Uh, we could just um, combo our eviscerate to do that. So we, we don't want to do that with vendetta, and vendetta can't go face like eviscerate. So it has to be in the scenarios where you're paying zero mana for it. I'm not sure that that vendetta is enough of a reason for me to play that deck, but it's good enough in that deck that I definitely want to play it if I can find a, a space for it. So I think I'm gonna have to give vendetta a three. I, I think. It looks like an insane tempo card, but how often we can play these and other class effects uh, in good decks is going to be the biggest um, concern for me. And I don't think Vendetta is a card that pushes you into that deck quite enough uh, in order to kind of get the 4 rating. Next up, we have Underbelly Fence. Underbelly Fence is a 2 mana 2, 3 rare minion with Battle Cry. If you're holding a card from another class, gain plus 1, plus 1, and rush. Uh, so as was pointed out to me, you can play Pilfer on one, and then you can play Underbelly Fence on two. I'm not really sure that that's the kind of curves Rogue wants, but a lot of... Well, Rogue is losing Firefly, which has pretty much been its only one drop since Anguro came out, uh, or its dominant one drop in, in non-odd decks at least. Um, and so I think that that means we're going to still just probably be daggering on two most of the time. It does open a little bit of space to Pilfer on one. I think Underbelly Fence is a fairly reasonable card, though. If we consider ourselves daggering on two and then playing our Hench Clan thugs on three, maybe we can uh, generate a, a card from our opponent's class on four or some uh, turn after that, and then the Underbelly Fence is still a reasonable tempo card. Uh, you have to remember that Rogue is losing Vilespine Slayer, and that matters quite a bit. Uh, that's quite a lot of tempo generation that Rogue loses from that. So... I think Underbelly Fence, much like Vendetta, is not a card that pushes me into playing the Thief Rogue archetype, but it certainly makes the archetype a lot better. I think what they've done with these two cards is they've allowed you to be rewarded from the anti-tempoing effect that you get from generating the uh, cards from another class, and they've allowed you to actually gain back tempo. And I think that's an important design consideration and something that certainly makes the uh, the um, archetype a lot better so I think together these cards uh, might be enough to push that thief rogue archetype but individually they're they're kind of only both threes I think um, maybe underbelly fence is insane enough but most of the time it's it's not like a totem golem it's not a two mana three four um, if it was a, more reliably a two mana three four if pilfer is good enough to play on one then it might go up to a four uh, next up, we have Togwaggle Scheme. So we've mentioned this card a little bit. Uh, Togwaggle Scheme is a one-mana a rare spell. Choose a minion, shuffle one copy of it into your deck, uh, and this upgrades each turn. So this means if it's been in your hand for three turns, you're going to be able to shuffle three copies of the minion. So if you want to set up for a High Sparrow and Togwaggle and um, the Wondrous Wand to give you zero mana copies of a specific minion or deck like Malagos, then you can either Myra's or something to get your deck empty, and then you can do the Togwaggle scheme and um, play something like the Wand. So there's a lot of really cool combo synergy with Togwaggle scheme. It does nothing on the turn you play it, which is important to consider, but it is also a very good tech card for um, value mirrors or for building like a, an extreme value uh, rogue especially if you just want to actually play one minion repeatedly, like a Pogo Hopper, for instance. Um, you can Myra's Unstable Element with just a Pogo Hopper and Togwaggle Scheme in your hand, and then you can still put a ton more um, Pogo Hoppers in your deck. The only problem with that is having a deck that's extremely one-dimensional like that means that your opponent can try and play around it. Uh, we saw this with something like Jade Idol, uh, where your opponent could time the plays 
to play around even the the very big minions that came out there which is similar to what the pogo hopper kind of does in this scenario so ultimately a, a value rogue deck could be a thing except for the fact that once again rogue struggles to get to the late game to make all this value pay off and that's the the biggest problem i have with the idea of that archetype and why i don't necessarily think that archetype is going to be uh, amazing i think togwaggle scheme is a th uh, a card that i would give, mostly give a sideboard rating to but i think it will see play in main decks and that's why i'm going to give it a three overall i think that the card is pretty interesting i really like the design uh, it's probably my favorite scheme as well um, maybe not the most powerful of the schemes but probably my favorite one so i'm maybe a little biased but i'm going to give togwaggle scheme a three uh, next up we have hench clan burglar Hench Clan Burglar is a 4-mana four 4-3 four, pirate with battle cry, discover a spell from another class. So this is a way to generate cards from another class to activate your vendettas. Uh, this is a pirate for raiding party. Uh, this is a pirate for hook tusk as well. Even though, yes, you don't get the battle cry effect when you get the hook tusk. It just means that there's more pirates in your deck for hook tusk to hit which is quite frankly a problem right now is there's not that many good pirates. Uh, it synergizes with um, some of the other pirates like South Sea Captain that you might have in your deck. Uh, it's a four drop and Rogue is losing um, Felderai Strider. So it's losing one of its four drops. So that also matters in non-pirate decks and non-thief um, uh, rogue decks. Overall, I think Hench Clan Burglar is just a very, very solid card. I'm going to give it a 4 because I think it works in a lot of rogue decks. And I think it's uh, very solid. Like, it, it is, doesn't have to be a card in the Thief Rogue archetype. Because it's a 4-mana four 4-3 four, that kind of replaces itself. And that's, that's okay. Um, but the Pirate Tag is the interesting part. Because of how well it synergizes with some of the other pirate synergies that rogue has so i think i'm pretty in for hench clan burglar and i think we might see it in uh multiple different rogue decks so i'm gonna give hench clan burglar a four next up we have evil miscreant evil miscreant is a three mana one five common minion with combo add two random lackeys to your hand so this card gives two lackeys for three mana that's pretty good you obviously have to combo at first. Uh, Rogue has plentiful ways to combo, but you really don't want to be using a prep to combo with this. Um, and then you need the prep with like the High Sparrow Togwaggle if that's the reason you're trying to get lackeys. And la that seems to be the big payoff for lackeys. I'm not really sure Evil Miscreant is good enough to be played in a deck where you don't have a specific reason you want to generate these lackeys. But... but Evil Miscreant, I mean, the lackeys themselves are really good in Rogue. They activate your future combos. Uh, they're good tempo cards. And they um, provide you an extra ping on the board, which can help uh, you maneuver your dagger better. So, I, overall, I think Evil Miscreant seems like a, a, re a reasonable card. I'm just not sure that we're going to see it see all that much play outside of the lackey decks. Uh, so I'm going to give it a 2. I think that Rogue has so many other options on 3 that we don't want to play it in most of our tempo-based decks. Uh, next up, we have Daring Escape. Daring Escape is a 1-mana spell. Uh, it's common and it reads, Return all friendly minions to your hand. So uh, this would have been obviously pretty nutty in the days of Quest Rogue. Right now, I don't really see the, the combos for this. Um, so I think overall I'm just going to have to give Daring Escape uh, a 2 as a fringe card. Uh, I think it's actually bordering on trash because it's probably unplayable in this meta. But overall I think that Daring Escape is a card that could see some uh, future combos. But right now I don't really think the pool of cards is big enough to make Daring Escape all that powerful. Uh, one of the other things that we, we should consider as well with a lot of the rogue cards is that there is still some battle cry synergy with uh, some of these like lackey based things like High Sparrow and Togwaggle and um, uh, the Hench Clan Burglar uh, being the like uh, Spirit of the Shark and maybe that's still a deck anyway. Uh, overall, looking at Rogue, I think that Rogue is in a pretty good place. I think Raiding Party is still a very, very strong card, and that's going to probably carry Rogue 
uh, quite a bit. They got a pirate. That's a good thing. They got a weapon. That's a good thing. Both of those are good things for raiding party in particular. So I think that we could well still see a tempo rogue deck. Uh, perhaps uh, it's still going to be a pirate deck because of raiding party. Uh, another thing to consider with the pick is that it has four attacks. So it makes your um, uh, Dread Corsairs free for no cost. The problem obviously being that you could just end up bouncing them. Um, which unless you can get favorable trades is not necessarily what you want to do. But because they have taunt, a lot of times they're going to die as well. So overall, I think Rogue is looking to be one of the stronger classes. I think it's got a couple of options. I really am interested to try out these weird combo-y and valued decks. I think that even in the more tempo-based decks, you're going to have some sideboard options that can generate you value. Um, and I think that that's very important for specialist as well. So I'm looking forward to being able to play Rogue in uh, Specialist Tournaments. I think that it should be in a pretty good position overall, uh, particularly in that format. So I think uh, things are looking pretty good for Rogue. Um, if you agree with me, feel free to drop a comment in the comments below. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Dib underscore gaming. Uh, and if you're on Twitch, uh, you can also find me there, also Dib underscore gaming. And you can pop by chat and say hello and uh, mock me if I got any of the cards wrong. Uh, although uh, I'm sure there's many, many I got wrong. Uh, but if you want to hear what I have to say about the rest of the cards, stick around. Uh, we're going to be doing Shaman next. Just three more classes left. And if you missed any of the other videos, check them out on YouTube. Uh, but for now, cheerio.